This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. Good news, everyone. I've got a new studio. You may have noticed that I haven't been posting a lot of videos lately, and all of this is why. I signed the lease for this place back in February, and myself and my new crew have been working diligently on building it ever since. I won't be introducing them in this video, but you will get to meet them eventually. Picture your classic sci-fi heist team, and you've got a reasonable approximation of what they're like. And it is not overselling it to say that they are literally the smartest and most talented people I know. But before I start the tour, I want to tell you a story, and it starts with a demonstration. What you just saw was the first science experiment I ever did, or at least a recreation of it. When I was 14, I was bored out of my skull, and I was looking for something cool to build. By pure luck, I happened to find a video about a device called a fuser. This is a fuser, by the way. Basically, the way this works is it uses high voltage and high vacuum to fill a container with plasma. This one is using a tiny little bit of air that was left in the chamber, but if I were to instead replace that air with the heavier version of hydrogen, called deuterium, and then crank the voltage past 30,000 volts, it'll actually smash the atoms together so hard that it'll fuse into helium. Unsurprisingly, as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to build one, and it took almost a year and a half to finally make it work, which is kind of funny when you consider that this recreation took, I don't know, two days? What's a little bit fun is that this is the original box that that one was built out of, and I even actually still have the original first chamber. Not that it works anymore. This project was the thing that sparked my love of experimentation, but more than that, it taught me so much about various aspects of science and engineering. Though I have no idea how I didn't end up dead, because these things can kill you easily a hundred different ways. But more than that, this was also the first project that I ever made that I also wanted to film and put on the internet. Really, this project was the thing that started this channel, and I never could have guessed where it would lead. From this one project spawned so many more. For example, the magnetron system that I built two years ago never could have happened without me first doing this project. Not only because this taught me so much about working with high voltage and vacuum systems, but it also taught me how to scrounge parts from whatever garbage was lying around. Remember, that system was built out of dollar store jars and hardware store parts. Not long after that project, I ended up growing actual human neurons on the electrode arrays that I made with that system. Each thing led to the next and the next and the next. Starting from here and fast forwarding 12 years, I'm now standing in the lab of my dreams with basically every tool that we could think of that we might need. And the things that we not only have planned, but have already started building, are going to rock your frickin' worlds. So let's go room by room and see what all the fuss is about. And then we're gonna talk about what I've got planned and what we're already working on. I will say the lab isn't 100% finished, but at some point we had to draw the line at it being done enough that we could actually get working. And at this point, it is already highly functional. We're going to start with the least exciting room first, and that's the office. Ugh. Well, I should say the least exciting for now. It's got all your basic office needs. Couch, food area, desks for everyone to work at. Fairly simple, but very comfy. This is also where my fuser replica lives, right underneath my silver play button, as a way to remind me where I started and where I'm at now. And hopefully, right, 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 about, right about there, right about there should be a gold play button, hopefully soon. All right, lab coat time. Let's see what's cooking in the bio lab. Welcome to the new bio lab. 
This room is by far the most done of all of them, and it's also one I'm really excited about. Long-term viewers will be able to basically instantly tell how much of an improvement this is from my old lab. It's spacious and it is packed to the brim with new tools ready for a lot of very, very cool projects. Let's start with the thing that's easily the hardest in the room to miss, and that's my new gigantic fume hood. This thing was a nightmare from the moment it arrived. The shipping company had decided that the stickers on the side of the package that says do not stack anything on this were more suggestions. And so this showed up squished like a pancake when it first arrived. It took more than a week's work and frankly large amounts of just brute force and ignorance to get this thing back into working order. Though mercifully, the glass door was still intact, which was basically the only reason we decided to repair it. Now, even after it was repaired and working, then we had the tiny problem of how we were going to get it into the room, because only after it arrived did we realize it's not going to fit through the door. So we had to take off the door, a large chunk of the wall, and rent a special machine just to get it in here and onto the desk that it's currently sitting on. But it's now plumbed up, it works beautifully, the fan is installed, it's basically everything I could have asked for. It was just a lot of work to get it to this point. The counterpart to the fume hood is my new flow hood. Fume hoods suck in air through the front and up the top and out, whereas flow hoods suck in dirty air through the top, pass it through this gigantic HEPA filter, and then blow perfectly clean air over the work surface. This is going to be super critical for making sure that all of my work stays sterile at all times. But more than that, this just unlocked a ton of bio projects that I've wanted to do for a really long time. There's a variety of cell types that are just so sensitive that any contamination will ruin them. Things like neurons, other mammalian cells, or plant cells. With this and a new CO2 incubator that I plan on eventually building, it'll be full steam ahead on the neuron project, and you can bet that I am not going to stop until I make a dish of neurons pass me some goddamn butter. Something that I'm really excited about is underneath the flow hood, and that's my new minus 80 freezer. This cute little thing can actually get down to cryogenic temperatures, and it means that I can store all of my cells properly. Freezing cells is a little bit weird. If you store them in the fridge, they can last for a sort of medium amount of time, depending on the cell type, but if you stick them in a normal freezer, they'll die almost instantly. Whereas if you freeze them cryogenically, for whatever reason, they can last years and years and years. More than that, with this, I can also keep little tubes of pre-made cells ready to go that are already in the perfect condition to take in new DNA. So instead of having to prepare them every single time before I do a transformation protocol, I can just grab a tube out of the freezer and immediately put the DNA in, making my work go a lot faster. So this is going to be a safer way to store things, it'll make things faster, and also to make sure that nothing ever happens to this, I have a backup battery over here that gives me at least an hour and a half of extra runtime. So say there's a power outage, it gives me time to come here and react so that all of my stuff isn't ruined. Moving right along, these three benches each serve a specific purpose, both above and below. The first is the analysis bench. This is where I keep both of my microscopes, as well as various spectrometers, so that way I can measure and quantify everything that I do. The middle desk is home to my amazing biorobot, Kamaji, which I recently did a whole video about if you'd like to learn more about him. And finally, this is the prep bench. I have my three different centrifuges for working with different sized tubes. I've got one and a half mil, 15 mil, and 50 mil. I've got my thermocycler and various analytical balances. This way I can prep and process just about any sample I'm going to be working with. Below the analysis bench, we have a really fun new toy. This is my brand new freeze dryer. And it's going to be used for a mix of both serious and incredibly stupid things. On the serious side of things, we're going to be using it for freeze drying DNA or proteins, anything that we want to store long term at room temperature or if we wanted to ship it out. For example, if we decided that we wanted to, say, make bio kits for sale, this is how we would prepare all of our samples so that it's safe to send them at room temperature. On the incredibly stupid side, well, let's just say we're going to be doing some horrible things to fast food. Underneath the other benches is mostly just storage, but the eagle eye viewer might notice this thing, which is my brand new electroporator. Hopefully, this is going to make DNA transformations both much easier and more consistent. Over here is basically just storage, but it's also where I keep all my incubators. I currently have three, one for bacteria, one for fungi, and one that is variable depending on what I'm doing. 
the variable one also keeps tubes spinning, which increases cell growth rate, which is really important when you're doing things like transformation protocols. Eventually, I'm going to be adding a fourth up top here, specifically for mammalian cells, so that way we can do things like the Neuron Project. And down below, I already have a pre-made, ready-to-go plant incubator, which I've used previously in the past, and actually works surprisingly well, considering it's made out of a Home Depot bucket. Spinning things around, we can see what's on the other end of the room. Primarily, my freezer and fridge. These are a huge upgrade from my last one, which was a mini fridge about yay high. Um, the old freezer and fridge was tiny, so to actually find any of my samples required almost taking everything out to get the one tube that's at the back of the freezer. This is a huge upgrade. It's way more storage, it means I can store more DNA, more samples, more reagents, anything that I'm going to need. While we're over here, it's also an opportunity to talk about how we're keeping the lab clean. Specifically, at both entrances, we have these sticky mats. These are fantastic because they get all the dirt and gunk off of your feet so you're not tracking it through the lab. You'll also see there's these two green lines marked on the floor. For anyone who's just transiting through the bio lab, say going from the office to the workshop, they just walk between the green lines and then none of the junk that they're tracking through, even that doesn't come off from the sticky mats, ends up in the lab. This makes it much easier to keep things clean, and with the occasional bit of sweeping and mopping, I can still keep everything nice and clean and ready for use without any fear of contamination. Another thing that's helping to keep everything clean is this air filter, and I've got another one stashed on that side of the room. Between these and the HEPA filter, it means that all of my work will stay nice and clean, even with people walking through all the time. Finally, we have the new dishwasher and sink. Now, it may not seem like these are noteworthy to mention, but keep in mind, when you're doing biology, you generate a huge amount of dirty glassware. So this is gonna go a long way to making sure that everything is always clean and ready for use. This dishwasher was actually a gift from Niall Red's old lab, so huge thanks to him. Thanks, Niall, this thing works great. Also, the sink doesn't seem like it's noteworthy, but having access to running water is super important in a bio lab. In my old lab, I had to cross through two rooms and down a hallway just to clean a beaker. It was really annoying. The other thing that you might notice is on the wall, we have a reverse osmosis system that generates deionized water. Having access to deionized water is also fantastic because previously I'd have to be constantly going to the store to buy bottles of it, which is really, really bad if I'm in the middle of a protocol and finally run out. So having access to a basically infinite supply whenever I need it is amazing. Finally, one last thing that I want to highlight is my little table of oddities. This includes my decellularized pig heart, which I made a video about probably six or seven years ago now, a cute little skunk skull, little vial of black widow spiders, and of course, a piece of T-Rex bone, which I'll be using for a future project. Before we go any further on the tour, I want to just take a moment to talk about something really important, and that's the spider silk project. A big part of building this lab is that I want to take the Silk Project very seriously. Specifically, I want to develop it all the way to a commercial product. It's a lot of fun just making some for myself, but I want to be able to walk into a store and have reams of the stuff available for cheap for anyone. But for that to work, I'm going to have to run dark for a while. I know I said I was going to make videos about the whole process, but for this to be successful, I'm going to have to keep it quiet for now. That's not to say there won't be any Silk videos. The original video will still stay up, and the original construct will stay up on GitHub. But any further developments, I'm going to have to keep quiet for now. Once I have more to share, I'll make an update video, but it could be a little while. Though I think that once we have enough of the actual Silk to play around with, we're probably going to make a real web shooter to make up for the lack of Silk videos. So I hope you aren't too disappointed, but I promise the end result is going to be worth it. And there's still going to be loads of bio videos on topics that are just as mind-blowing, so you'll still get your biotech fix, it'll just be on different topics. But that's all for the bio lab. We've got three more rooms to go, so let's keep moving. This is the new workshop, and to call it a dream to work in is a grave understatement. It's host to a large amount of workspace, and importantly, about 6,000 pounds of beautiful metal in the form of this glorious 1950s Colchester lathe and this far less old Mako milling machine. Easily one of the most popular videos on my channel was the time a friend and I built a torch that shoots out a little jet of cold room temperature fire. That project was a lot of fun, but it was only possible because right around the time that I filmed it, I suddenly gained access to a little mini metal lathe. That one tool radically changed the projects I was able to do, but at its heart, that lathe was janky as hell and barely functional. This one, on the other hand, is beautiful and extremely functional. The nice thing with old tools like this is they just last forever. 
And this thing really is a beast. It has a 16 inch throw and is running off of three phase power so it can handle gargantuan hunks of metal. And honestly, the catharsis of using this thing is amazing. Here, check this out. I mean, just how satisfying are those ka-chunks? Oh, it's fantastic. This thing honestly feels more like operating a beast than a machine. And I've already sunk dozens of hours into using both it and the new mill for projects that we're already working on. I'm actually filming this on a weekend because during the week, we're very busy turning this giant pile of beautiful metal stock into the vacuum system of my dreams. This thing is going to be capable of so much. We're building a brand new magnetron sputtering system. It'll be able to do thermal evaporation. We're gonna build ion engines. Basically, anything that you can think of that goes in a vacuum system, this is going to be able to do. We're gonna do coatings, we're gonna grow diamonds, we're gonna make things for spacecraft. And I cannot wait to take you all on the ride with me. Welcome to the Canadian Press Channel, eh? Fucking A, buddy, why don't you pull up a beer? It's time to press some things. Blast them. <laughs> Fucking A. Bit of wood. <laughs> All right. Gracious, gracious. <laughs> All kidding aside, this is actually a really fun addition in the shop. It's an air hydraulic 20 ton press. And boy, does this thing chew hard. We're going to be using it for a lot of things, primarily mold making, bending things. But I mean, we're also going to just squish a bunch of dumb stuff because we can. So I'm excited to show you all of that. Speaking of compressed air. You may have noticed this copper line that runs all the way around the room. This is our compressed air system, and it runs from the massive compressor in the hot work room, which you'll see later, to everywhere else we're gonna need compressed air. I really did not realize how useful having these lines was until we had them. And you can bet that I'm gonna be investing in a large amount of air tools, because it's just so convenient having a line wherever you need it while you're working. One of the biggest bits of inspiration for this workshop is Adam Savage and his phenomenal workshop specifically his idea of first order accessibility. Basically, this is the idea that everything you're gonna be working with should just be visible at all times. Something he says a lot is that drawers are where tools go to die, and I wholeheartedly agree. So we've gone out of our way to make sure that we've embraced this principle all throughout the room. This workspace is one of my favorites because of the French cleats that we have on the walls and all of the boxes that we've built for it. Specifically, let's say that I'm going to do something and I need some tape or some adhesives. All I have to do, look at the tape box or go to the adhesive box. I don't need to dig through drawers and boxes to find what I'm looking for. One of my favorites though are these drill holsters because it makes it so easy to always find where these are. And when we go to clean things up, it also makes it infinitely faster putting things away. Everything has a place and everything goes where it's supposed to go. Also, as a bit of a side note, it's kind of fun having now made a lot of these boxes and then watching his channel. It is crazy how quickly he actually builds projects. And I didn't realize just how fast he is at building boxes and all of the wonderful things that he makes until I had to do it myself. He really just blazes through that stuff very quickly and it's super impressive. Also, if you haven't seen his channel, highly recommend it. There are so many amazing shop tips in there that we've come to embrace for basically everything we do. 
Speaking of organization, I can't forget to mention these beautiful wall-mounted organizers. We've got them divided into basically two categories. This side is the most common sizes of bolts, nuts, and washers, and the one behind me is the most common sizes of screws and other small parts that we're going to use regularly. These things are so convenient while we're prototyping things. It's so nice to be able to just wander over here when you need something. Say, a quarter, 20, inch and a half bolt. You can just look, grab it, and go. There's no more need to dig through boxes or bags to just find the one thing that you actually need. If you have space for something like this in your workshop, I highly recommend it. But that's basically it for the workshop. While we're over here, let's head through these double doors into the 3D printer and craft room. Welcome to the 3D printer room. This is where we keep, well, all the 3D printers, as well as the new laser cutter and the new craft station. We currently have four printers, three resin and one FDM. Probably the showiest of the bunch is this one, which is a Phenom L from Piopoli, which is a gigantic resin printer. But probably my favorite are the two Prusa ones. There have been a lot of complaints in previous videos saying that earlier projects would have been so much easier if only I had a 3D printer. Yeah, you were right. No, it was completely correct. I, this is wonderful, being able to just basically spawn physical objects from essentially goo. I am so looking forward to using these in future projects, and I can't wait to see the things we're going to make with them. This is our new laser cutter, and it was one of the last additions to the shop, but already it has been incredibly, incredibly useful. After we did our mandatory dick butt test cut, we moved on to cutting actually useful things like gaskets for the new vacuum system. I absolutely love this thing because not only will it make making functional objects much easier, I think it will also go a long way to making the projects look more beautiful, which, you know, technically that doesn't have anything to do with the function, but I've done so much grungy science, I'm really looking forward to making things that are just nice and beautiful and functional as well. This is the new craft station, and although it's not much to see right now, it's just a table, eventually we're also going to have a little painting station and maybe some sewing materials on here as well, so that maybe we can dip our toes into doing some cosplay. And of course, we also have our extra 0.5 of a 3D printer. All right, one more room to go. Let's check out the hot work room. Welcome to the hot work room. This is where we do anything that gets, well, hot, or also, alternatively, really, really messy. So for example, things like using our brand new kiln, but another example is running our autoclaves, because this is sort of the only room where it makes sense to be letting off large plumes of steam. The hot work room is probably the least done of the batch. As you can see behind me, our material storage is mostly piles. We, we mostly have piles. So eventually we're going to build some better material racks and, and that sort of thing, but it wasn't really a priority yet. But we do still have a few fun things in here. We have our metal bender, which I still need to anchor into the concrete. We have our new welder, which I'm super excited because there's so many projects that can be made better with welding. And in fact, the project we're working on currently requires it, so that's going to be a lot of fun. But the one I'm the most excited about is probably this, which is our CNC plasma cutter. I am a huge fan of Colin Furs, and seeing the things that he's been able to do with his CNC cutter makes me so excited for what I'll be able to do with this. We have a few things planned, but it still will be a little bit till you see this one in a video. Also, this is where the actual air system is stored. It starts with this gigantic compressor, and then runs through this whole manifold to the rest of the workshop. One of the last things that I need to do in this room is build a little stand for our bench grinder and belt sander. This is sort of the perfect room for it because those are both very, very messy. So if you're gonna make a mess, it's great to do it in this room because you can just open the garage door, vent everything outside, and then we don't make a ton of dust that gets into our workshop. But that's all the room's done. There's one more upstairs, but it's basically just storage, so I'm not gonna show it to you because there's nothing really to see. One thing I want to reiterate, though, is this isn't my first lab. I know it looks like there's a lot of new stuff in here, and I mean, there absolutely is, but keep in mind, I've been building up to this space for more than a decade, and even then, it's only possible because I'm sharing it with three of my best friends. So I hope this doesn't come across as me just bragging about all my new stuff, but rather show you what's possible if you just keep focused and working on the thing that you love. There has been a lot of struggle getting to this point. I've been basically kicked out of one country. I've had to work in abusive conditions for the absolute scummiest people. But three years ago, when I decided to take the plunge and start doing YouTube full time, I never could have imagined how many of you amazing people would come out to support me in doing the thing that I love. 
And now I'm literally sitting in the lab of my dreams, and I am so, so grateful. So I just want to extend a very, very special thank you to all of you who've supported me all this time. I know there's some of you who've literally been watching since that first user video. I don't know why. The videos weren't very good for a very long time, but you stuck around and you continue to support me. So again, I just want to say thank you so much. But before I talk about the projects we're working on and are coming up, I need to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, CuriosityStream. The whole lab you just saw is a testament to curiosity and wanting to learn more about the world. But if you want to do a little learning from the comfort of your home, CuriosityStream is the place to be. If you use the coupon code THOUGHTEMPORIUM, for only $14.99 per year, you get access to thousands of documentaries and non-fiction TV shows on a massive range of topics, from science, nature, and technology, to history, travel, food, and more. It also features 35 collections hand-picked by experts for you to enjoy, featuring award-winning originals and exclusives. This probably comes as no surprise, but one I really enjoyed recently was a short called Super Spider Silk. You know I love all things spiders, so it's always great learning more about the incredible diversity of the many species that exist in nature. There are many more to enjoy, so be sure to check out the link in the description, or go to curiositystream.com slash thoughtemporium and sign up today. Okay, let's finish this up by talking about some projects that we're either working on or are coming up. We've already talked about a few of them, like the Magnetron, Vacuum System, Ion Engines, and Neuron Project, but that really barely scratches the surface. There's a bunch of projects that were either old and I wanted to revisit, or we'd started and never were able to finish them for one reason or another. One that I'm really excited to come back to and hopefully finish is the Ruby and Sapphire project. There's a couple different channels who've now successfully made rubies, but we wanted to try and do it on a little bit of a larger scale and ideally end up with a higher quality end product. There's also a few other very high temperature projects that we've got cooking, but I kind of want to save those as a surprise for now. On the bio side of things, I have, frankly, an absolute shitload of DNA, each of which is its own project. Okay, let's see what we've got. Um, oh, this one's fun. This one makes yeast produce a protein called leg hemoglobin, which is the red protein used in the Impossible Burger to give it its meaty taste. So we might make some Impossible Burgers. What else do we got? Oh, these ones are fun. These ones are the egg and milk constructs that I designed on a stream a while ago. This one makes mammalian cells completely resistant to radiation. And that one makes plants glow in the dark. There's a lot of fun stuff in here, and I'm excited to do videos on all of it. Of course, there are many, many, many more. I mean, I don't have this piece of T-Rex bone just as decoration. But I hope that this tour and talking about all these projects has gotten you as excited as I am for the next few years of videos. And if you are, you're definitely going to want to follow me on Twitter and Instagram because I post updates there regularly. And of course, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to see when I post all those new videos. Before I close out, I want to say another thank you to my many patrons, members, and supporters on Ko-fi. Your support has been amazing over the years, and I am super, super grateful that you let me continue making these videos. So if you'd like to help keep the flow of science videos coming, there's some links below. And patrons and members get access to the supporter discord, if that's something you're interested in. But that's all for now, and I'll see you next time.